the University of Kansas is pleased to present the Civil Engineering 240 video tutorial series, How to Use a Digital Theodolite. The Digital Theodolite is a common surveyor's tool frequently used for topographic surveying. The instrument is capable of finding both horizontal and vertical angles, and when combined with stadia techniques, can be used to calculate horizontal distances and differential elevations. For this tutorial, we're going to determine the horizontal angle by repetition between the two red lines you see on the screen on the Learned Hall front lawn, the angle A, B, C. The survey team begins by locating the vertex of the angle to be determined. In this case, it's marked with a yellow traverse cap. The survey team then proceeds to place the tripod directly over the traverse cap, securing each leg firmly into the ground. The team then carefully removes the digital theodolite from the case and places it atop the tripod, securing the bolt firmly into the base of the instrument. The instrument should be at approximately eye level so that no one has to squat too low or stand on their tippy toes to be able to see through the instrument. Adjust the tripod height as necessary. Once the height of the tripod has been made comfortable for the team, it is important to make sure that the instrument is directly over the traverse cap. To do this, place the line of the plumb bob through the hook in the bolt of the tripod. Then gently extend the plumb bob line down towards the top of the traverse cap. Observe the location of the tip of the plumb bob. If the tip of the plumb bob lines up directly with the center of the traverse cap, you're done. If not, adjust the theodolite's location on the top of the tripod accordingly until the tip of the plumb bob is directly centered on top of the traverse cap. Next, ensure the instrument is level by adjusting the three leveling screws on the trivia arc at the base of the theodolite. Ensure that the bubble is at the center of the circle on the level. To verify that the vertical axis of the digital theodolite lines up perpendicularly to the center of the traverse cap, use the optical plummet located at the side of the instrument to look through and verify that the circular rings are on the center of the circular traverse cap. Next, open the battery door located on the side of the theodolite and insert the two C batteries located in the case paying close attention to the positive and negative polarities. Finally, to complete the instrument setup, record the height of the instrument by using either the rod or a tape measure to measure the height of the instrument from the ground up to the gray line located on the side of the instrument as demonstrated. Record this value in the field book, in this case 4.80 feet. It is a value that we will refer to again as we complete this portion of our survey. For your reference, here is a look at point A, followed by point C. We will be turning the angle to the right to form angle A, B, C. We are now ready to begin surveying. To begin, the instrument operator removes the lens cap if they have not done so already and presses the red on button to activate the digital theodolite. Then the instrument operator sights the scope on a rod at point A, focusing specifically on the HI. Once the scope is very nearly sighted on the HI at the rod at point A, the instrument operator will then rotate the horizontal and vertical angle locking dials on the instrument to hold the angle. Fine adjustments may be made by rotating the dials immediately behind the locking knobs. Once the instrument has been carefully focused on the HI and the horizontal and vertical angles have been finely adjusted and locked, the operator will then press the zero set button on the instrument twice to zero out the horizontal angle. Next, the instrument operator looks through the scope and observes the upper and lower stadia readings and records those values into the field book. 
the upper stadia reading minus the lower stadia reading is your S value for point A. Also record the vertical angle shown on the instrument. Next, we will proceed to turn the angle to the right by unlocking the horizontal and vertical locks and then rotating the scope to be directed towards the rod at point B. At point B, we will once again focus the scope directly on the HI. Once the scope is focused on the HI, rotate the horizontal and vertical locks and use the fine adjustment knobs as necessary to zero in specifically on the HI as best as possible. Proceed to write in the field book the horizontal and vertical angle readings provided by the instrument. This will be your first unplunged horizontal angle. Next, proceed to place a hold on the horizontal angle by pressing the play pause button on the instrument twice. Then the instrument person should look through the scope and note the upper and lower stadia readings and then have the recorder note them in the field book. Next, we will proceed to unlock the vertical angle lock and then rotate the scope 180 degrees so as to plunge the scope and then we will unlock the horizontal angle lock and rotate the instrument so that the front of the scope is now pointed towards point A. Once the rod person has returned to point A, the instrument person may proceed to fine tune the instrument back on the HI. Notice that the instrument controls are now facing away from you. Now proceed to rotate the horizontal and vertical angle locks and then proceed to read the upper and lower stadia readings as well as the vertical angle off the instrument and record in the field book as a secondary measurement at point A. The objective now is to turn the angle to the right a second time. So we will now have to unlock the horizontal angle by pressing the play pause button once on the front of the instrument. Now that the horizontal angle reading of the instrument is active, we will proceed to turn the horizontal angle a second time by turning the instrument to look at the HI. The effect of this is that the instrument will now report approximately double the horizontal angle reading as is previously reported before for the same angle. Once the instrument is fully sighted in on the HI, the vertical angle reported should be approximately the same as before. Proceed to lock the instrument and record the horizontal, vertical angles, as well as the upper and lower stadia readings at point B. Remember, this is a plunged horizontal angle. To further reduce error, the survey team may turn this angle a third time, a fourth time, plunging the angle alternatingly just as we did between the first and second angle. This should always be done in pairs so that there is an even number of angle turns. Bear in mind also that once the instrument has turned 360 degrees, it will revert back to zero. So you may have to add multiples of 360 onto your horizontal angle to ascertain the correct angle reading. This completes the process for angle A, B, C. Continue on for each subsequent angle on your traverse polygon. Once the team is done with the instrument, place the lens cap back on the scope and remove the batteries. Gently remove the instrument from the tripod and return to the case. Remove the tripod from the ground, collapsing it and picking up any trash that you may have accumulated in the field. It is now time to start the calculations.